Um, guys, um, I would like to invite Juana and Robert here as well. Mauricio is going to join me as well. So, uh, very good morning to you all. Uh, I think it was a very interesting morning uh, because we are practically, uh, we are a living proof of our humanity. We are always living a simple but complex life. We are, we are eager to get digital, but still we are very analog. And uh, as a proof of that, uh, we have here three, two experts, in fact, Robert doing strategy, Juana doing products, and of course my colleague, Marcio. Um, so I will kindly invite my guests to present themselves because there's no better presentation than self-introduction. Juana, please. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Juana Ilash. I uh, work in Banca Transylvania and I am head of retail. I am uh, coming uh, after a three years assignment in Thailand, back to Romania. I am very glad to be back to meet you all. Okay, thank you very much. Marcy, you just have the pleasure to meet yeah, him no need uh, to a little bit earlier, so he's quite, uh, quite known now. So, as I said, uh, we are complex and the business is complex and in the last years we have been let's say focusing on digital 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 we even start a very nice journey this year with a uh, digital banking scorecard in the early spring i had the pleasure to moderate another panel with one when we, when we launched that study but still <clears throat> 20, 10 15 years ago when i was still in banking i had a problem with the people that were coming to our branches and people are still coming to our branches and the big question here and for especially for my banking guest is guys how you are coping with this dichotomy we want to go digital but we still have branches we want to get very nice results in a pnl we want to reduce the opex we close the branches but still the people are knocking on our doors People are not acquainted to use the technology, but still, we are forcing the technology. So, Wana, you are the representative of the largest banks in Romania with the largest network currently, and that has a tremendous digital exposure these days. Tell us from your experience, how we are coping with that? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> thank you for the question. It's a question that we are addressing ourselves every single day, and actually, this is part of... Um, my mantra, my personal mantra, and my uh, team's mantra that we question every day, sometimes the same questions, and sometimes we got uh, different answers, and uh, uh, there we find the uh, great opportunities um, in terms of change, in terms of progress. Uh, coming back to the question, um, I do believe that uh, actually they can coexist very well, and it's part of the journey. Uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the branches and uh, the digital platforms and the contact center as well to coexist uh, within this uh, digital transformation process. And um, um, we have uh, more than 3.4 million retail customers and uh, more than 400,000 uh, companies uh, in our portfolio. So um, we have taken the... Um, strategically role to be a universal bank addressing a whole range of customers and um, this uh, role comes with a great responsibility as well to invest further on also in the network and not just in the branches but also in the machines that we have in the branches and uh, in other locations um, uh, outside of the branches because we also see these machines as uh, mini branches, to say so, because uh, the technology, the hardware at, uh, as a foundation is developing 
every single year and we can address more uh, functionalities on these machines and it's part of the transformation process. And um, we do believe that uh, the customer's readiness is not full towards digital channels yet, but it's evolving significantly each year. And I remember um, when I saw that Robert is coming and um, um, uh, I want to take this opportunity to welcome him back in Romania. We missed you, Robert. Um, I remember that in uh, 2019, we were together in a panel at uh, Zefe at that time and uh, we were the first two to launch uh, NFC payments in, um, in Romania. And at that time, it was just 2.5%, I believe, out of the uh, physical payments that was NFC. And today, we are heading towards 50%, I think, uh, on the NFC environment. So it's, um, it's part of the evolution, and I think that uh, we have to balance the channels um, in educating customers and uh, being where they are. Thank you. Robert, your international experience, what tells you, tells us? Uh, I wouldn't speak now about the international experience. I would actually speak about the uh, ING's experience in or perspective in, in, in the duality between physical and digital, right? And uh, what we learned is that the two coexist. They will coexist forever, yeah? And there are two examples here, two routes that we took uh, as, a, as a group. Uh, uh, in, uh, I don't know, in the 90s some, sometimes, ING was the first digital only bank in the world. Uh, we have had this uh, 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 presence in uh, most of the southern countries. Digital only, worked great for some time. At some point, we also started investing in branches. Why? What has changed? It was the moment where we started to decide that we want to be more than a savings bank. We want to be a universal bank. So then when you need to accommodate more complex needs for the customers, when the, 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 the uh, ask, uh, the, the requirement of advice from the customer becomes more demanding, then you need to accommodate a physical, with a physical presence, this need. And yes, even in those countries where we were digital only, we are now also having physical presence. We have also seen this duality in Romania, or in countries where we started with this dual model. And we've seen how much benefit we got from the physical network when the physical network started to educate our customers into adopting digital. It was a great experience for us, and it was one of the, one of the drivers of the customer experience leadership that we, we are benefiting of. While we managed to, to run both this digital and physical network in an efficient way. Where's your, how you have seen, because you speak about simplicity yes. and we're a digital company that it's in no writing code, no code, low code, but still... <laughs> Bipolarity. Let's yeah. Yeah, a little bit bipolar. <laughs> That's the challenge of today. That's why it's complex, because you, you really need to make sure that... Uh, it's not about what you need to do, it's about how you're serving your customer. You need to be where he needs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's the challenge. So that means you need to either be hybrid, be where you need your customers to be, or you need to be just realistic that some customers you are leaving out. But you need to really pick what are the customer I want to have, and really serve them in the right they want. That's the only way to keep them loyal okay. with us. Thank you. My perspective now, <laughs> because I, I'm I'm okay. I'm working for 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 a company that is producing software. So I think, and my customer is you. So and your customer, obviously. But I think that for my customers, both the new and the end customer, I should be able to provide the seamless and similar or one-to-one -one exact experience. 
it is the same experience for your employee and the same experience should be for the, for the one that is uh, your customer, the end customer. So that's my point of view. But now going, going back a little bit to the challenge of the banking today. So Matia was surfing around the simplicity stuff, which is not simple because we know that we have big data, good data, data we have, but we don't have 360 data for the client or we're still missing it. We are not always able to engage, doesn't matter the channel, digital or, or physical. Um, we are a little bit slow in building the products, we are a little bit slow in servicing the product, we are a little bit even slower in testing the products. So all of that, it's impacting the client. So guys, how do we do to increase the customer experience, to increase the level that the customer is going to get satisfaction for interaction with our brands? What do you do? And then Matsi is going to tell what we are doing. Okay, I think you get to tell us. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Robert, please. Okay. Look, I take your statement. I have mixed feelings about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and I'm also, look, I'm uh, being for three years in Thailand, coming back. I am in the happy position to observe the country through these three years transformation lens that I, I can see in the market. And uh, happy or not, in reality, the banking industry has really changed in Romania in a positive way. And I will give you some examples. First, in the products arena, all the banks have uh, the, the, the cardo de salario. All the, uh, the banks have now the instant lending value proposition. All the banks... Most of the, ba the, 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 the banks have the NFC mobile yes. payments value proposition. Really, uh, what has happened is that the, the, the banking market has transformed itself during these three years. Is this enough? Nah, I don't know. Is this big? Uh, and is this impacting customer experience? I can tell you from our perspective, we were front runners together mm -hmm. with BT in this. Uh, and I can tell you, observing the customers, that customers positively react to that. So if all the banking markets, you know, accelerate towards these trends, I think that's a positive news for the customer. There's a second part of it. Not only the products have accelerated, also the digital presence of the bank is tremendously changed. Uh, in reality, we are not talking now in Romania about digital banks and no digital banks. Three years ago, we have spoken the, about this. In reality, all the big banks have, the, have a very strong digital proposition, and this is super impressive in only three years, right? This has Absolutely. happened with help from you guys, yeah, from guys like Fintech OS. And... Um, Again, this is in positively impacting the, 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 the value proposition. Is this enough? I don't know. I hope it's not because we still need our yes. jobs. Right? Yes. Well, <laughs> all right. It will never be enough. The, the world keeps moving. So. Yeah. But I think that that's important. That One thing is to be a pioneer. And you need to leverage the weight of the world to make it happen. But three years down the line, this is a commodity. Okay. And yeah. that means if you haven't had it, you need to grab the help you can, buy it, don't reinvent the wheel, but because the world won't stop. The challenge is now different and you keep changing. So I think that's important, it's like, uh, but it's still important that pioneers show that it's possible so that everybody can follow them. Yeah. Yeah, interesting thing about pioneering. Um, it's very good, but um, in the same time, um, uh, it's important for the market to be a little bit ready. Because we have some examples when uh, there is not enough readiness and some apparently innovation um, fails. But in a few years' time, uh, the same uh, way of solving a problem turns out to be a successful one. And um, we were lucky enough in Romania when we launched the, the NFC payments to uh, benefit from a readiness in the market because all, almost all the terminals at that time were contactless ready because um, that was the benefit of a, 
country in development as compared to a very mature market, for example, the United States, where the, the, the network of terminals, of POS terminals and ATMs was so mature by the time EMV and contactless came that it was very difficult for them to change all the infrastructure and the readiness is not at the same level as in our case, even today. So uh, that was a good opportunity for us. But talking about the relevance for the customer experience, I would bring again uh, in the discussion that uh, generally when we think about digital, we are thinking of uh, digital, the, the digital platform the bank has. But um, nowadays, digital has to be embedded in everything that we are doing, and this is okay. the the way we are promoting the product development in the bank actually to change everything in the most digital and sustainable uh, and sustainable way nowadays. That's the, the digital mindset that we have managed to, to develop and to, to embed in our, in our colleagues, in our teams uh, now. And um, um, talking about the channels, it's not that just the digital platform. It's what happens in the branches and sometimes uh, going through this transformational process we see some decoupled experiences, some um, um, lack of convergence, and that's uh, an important challenge that we want to address to, to improve the customer experience. We see uh, an increasing role that the customer support, the contact center has in uh, providing a better customer experience for our uh, customers because, because um, developing all these uh, platforms, all these uh, channels of interaction, we can provide better continuity in serving our customers. And that's um, how it should be, I think. That's part of the transformation. And this is a perfect roundup between the first question and the second question, right? You need, you, you need digital, but you also need human-assisted help yes. to, uh, to, to, to accommodate the digital transformation not only from the from the service uh, from the delivery point of view but also from the uh, uh, helping customers to adopt understand uh, and use the, the, the technology that you're yeah. putting it together yeah. I can give you um, an example of an experiment uh, it was an experiment at the beginning and now it turned out to be a great success for us um, in terms of the contact center so I will not speak about the digital platforms that we have uh, front-ending the customers but the, the, the contact center and actually we have managed to develop a front end there as well uh, for the customers to interact in a much more digital uh, way with the, with the contact center. Uh, we um, decided several years uh, ago to partner with a fintech in Israel and to implement a visual help in our contact center. And uh, uh, we decided at that point to use it as an experiment and to see how the, the transformation process goes. And now I can say that it's a big success because out of the almost half a million interactions that we have uh, in the contact centers in terms of calls, more than half are being um, uh, solved using this digital platform, the visual, the visual uh, help that we are providing in the contact center. So although we offer a lot of functions in the mobile wallet, in the mobile platform, customers still sometimes call the contact center. And it is important to be there for them in the transformational process. And so it's age doesn't matter. Yeah? It's not a question of age, because I am the one that called the call center as well. <laughs> okay, guys, but um, I will go to from here, because it's an interesting point. It's relevance, it's performance, any speed, and all of those three points were somehow embedded in Marcio's presentation early on, uh, he, softly, I mean, because he's a very soft communicator. Um, honestly, his presentation was a surprise for me. I knew the content, I, I, I understand what it has been transmitted, but not the, not the words. So the words that were the first, first time that I hear, heard them. It's a Portuguese thing. Yeah, it's a Portuguese <laughs> thing, it's a deceiving thing, yes, yes. We are much more straightforward. But question, how you do that? today, how you are preparing yourself, your organization, to be capable, to be relevant, to be at speed, to be capable of personalizing a launch, tons and tons of products, to be always at least half a step ahead of what the clients need. Because you are the most, I would say, prolific pro banks in, in terms of product developing. 
Can I rank? Yes. <laughs> of course. Um, I, I personally would put the relevance on the first place because um, although the fancy stuff and nice things are uh, nice enough, uh, and it is important to have some spark, some uh, interesting feature as well, unless you, you, you manage to have the relevant needs solved, yeah. the basic needs solved, you are not relevant. So in, in our case, I would put relevance on the, on the first position. Speed is equally important because uh, nowadays, as, uh, as uh, I heard uh, previously in the discussion, the dynamic of change um, yep. is at a very, very high speed. And I think I had the chance uh, several uh, months ago to attend a training with a professor from Harvard University, and it was a wow experience because he said something very relevant, that we all have an expiration date. And nowadays, um, nowadays, unless we are uh, speeding up the continuous development uh, as we are concerned, as individuals, as professionals, we are not relevant enough. So um, relevance is important, speed is important as well, unless you have a good pace of new deliveries, of new releases, you are not relevant enough. But Personalization, I think it's, it's um, the cherry on the cake. Yep. And it provides differentiation. But that level of personalization, it's exactly like talent when you are an artist or you are a sport, uh, sport person. And you, but you have to work every day. You have to do the, the basic things uh, exceptionally. And if you have a little bit of talent, and uh, on the top of it, that's the, the best recipe. <laughs> Absolutely. But being relevant is about anticipating the need. And I think it's all about, you need to know the need, you need to know your customer. So there's a lot of data, but then the talent to anticipate. And then it's being in the right moment, because uh, nobody's yeah, looking and for we a all, market. Yeah, we all love disruptive innovation. We like this, the word disruption. But actually, disruptive innovation it's just from time to time. It was about NFC, for example, when the technology um, had the foundation. But then the differentiation came from incremental, from sustainable innovation. For ev every day, every single day, doing something more to improve the customer experience. Exactly. The biggest trap that you can step into is to try to do innovation for the sake of innovation. Hey, there's yeah. another <laughs> tech outside. Let's do it. Web 3.0. Let's do it. Uh, yeah. Exciting, but uh, business model, customer experience, customer willingness to adopt it, is it already there or not? This is something to, to test, right? Um, and otherwise, indeed, I think the, the, the strongest uh, uh, point where you need to look into the organization is, is the culture ready to be fast? Are we well organized to be, to be fast? Uh, do we already have all the talent in place to be fast? And if all these questions are yes, then you can look at technology. Yes. Yeah. And you would be super lucky. <laughs> right. Mauricio, this is especially for you. Yeah. Just please, one minute, lift, lift up the hood on how we do things in terms of speed, of disruptiveness, of innovation, how we think in advance, what do we have in our roadmap, what is our vision about yeah. what we do? So the essence of what you do is we look to all that technology, mm. there is, some are disruptive, other are not, and we pick the ones who will add value. Because if it doesn't add value, they, if they don't make the end consumer life easier, it will fade away, it will just be another one. What we make sure is that you, need to, you don't need to worry about that. We prepare the scale. We prepare the, the building blocks of the innovation. We bring all the technology that we pick in the market being it's relevant, that will give you an edge on the way you interact, and we make it available. So that then you all, you all have the ingredients to build what we believe will make the difference. So the essence is we make it simple for you to play with the technology. We give you the operating system. So instead of trying to master machine learning, why don't you have just something you drag and it gives you? what you want. So it's bring you technology in a way you can consume. That's the first thing that we do in technology. Then we know that don't waste time on that. We leverage you. Then it's about speed. 
So you need to be flexible. Because these intuitions have an expiration date. You have an inspiration, but if you don't get to the market, put it there in a few weeks and see if it works. It will fade away. Somebody else is having the same idea. So we are not, you know, inspiration is everywhere. So that means we give everything in our platform to make sure that it's fast. The way you develop, the way you deploy, and the way you know if it worked or not. Because that's the other thing. So you have the technology ready, served to you to be used. We give you the flexibility to put all these building blocks into nice journeys, nice products. But then, did it work? Uh, sure. I mean, it's up to them to tell us if it's working. Um, okay, guys, we have about five more minutes. Uh, we are going to, to be the last, our last, uh, last interaction, last question. And we spoke about expiration, about relevance, and expiration equal retirement. And I think our combined banking experience is ready to be retired. So I think we are there in that age. So looking backwards to 2010 when we think, or 2000, when we think that digitalization starts in banking and it starts with data warehouse, with BI, with analytics, and so on and so forth, and it's still going on because these is things are never, never, uh, never ended. Uh, then we have a hit from the pandemic and everybody jumped on the front end of acquiring the client, interaction with the client. So back to end, now front to back. What are you doing right now? How are you covering end-to-end? -end? Because that's the, good, the point here. End-to-end -end and not only digitalization, because you, Robert, put, put the finger on the wound here. I mean, digitalization, just digitalizing an analog process is not going to bring us anywhere. Mm. How we cope with that? What do you do? It's hard for me to... Um... Uh, contextualize everything, but in, in reality, I don't recognize the fact that we move from back to front and from front to back. Uh, at least during these last three years, I know that one of the heaviest budget uh, requests that we had in the tech side was the, the, the data part. Yeah. Yeah. Building all the data warehousings, uh, building all the connectivity to, uh, to the processes that are fed into uh, into uh, with data and back and forth, right? Building all the personalization engines that then are feeding into the personalization uh, placeholders and campaigns that are exposed into the digital channels and all other channels in order to build the omnichannel experience. This is something that uh, I, I don't I don't recognize that it has had an evolution of uh, one on, uh, one and zero. It has been continuous at least in ING. Um, same, I would say, with the, with the evolution of front-end, right? I mean, okay, uh, we have already shared some, some things that we have done. Now, last year, we have launched this uh, uh, digital um, uh, uh, mortgage value proposition, right? The instant approval of mortgage. Uh, and this, more of these are coming. We are moving our attention now also to, to small companies and uh, middle companies. This is something that I don't see it that is in reality changing. Indeed, balancing <laughs> between the priorities, understanding where the business and the customer need is, this is something that is a super difficult ballet skills, skill. Um, um, uh, but happily, we are still in the, in the contest, right? Why not? Uh, yeah, another one which is complicated, and I think that um, Robert had a very good point. Actually, I think the the, uh, the front end and the back offices are going in parallel in terms of transformation. And although what the customer sees is the front end, and uh, um, most of us have concentrated heavily, especially as um, user uh, user interfaces. Um, um, on the front end, and it was, it was the most visible transformation, either in terms of the, the, the screens on the ATMs, the websites, the digital platforms. But on the other hand, exactly on the, on the journey, on the road, uh, we all had to and uh, have the, 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 the need to improve and to consolidate the foundation. And uh, we have to work heavily on the back in order to provide best-in-class integration and uh, um, to make sure that we are preparing the foundation to sustain all the floors and the levels up that are uh, coming um, on the way 
new products, new services, new interactions, new, new ways of um, solving the customer needs. Where is you? Our view? Our view is that, uh, <laughs> first of all, it's end-to-end. -end. Yeah. There's no way you can. But what matters is not if it's the front or the back, it's the customer. Yeah. Are you continuously adding more value? And I think sometimes when we think about this transformation, we see as we start here and we finish there. This is a marathon. It will never be over. And that means that you always need to be on this cycle, improving the value you give to your customer. And this means sometimes it's about the convenience, the front end, make it easier for mm -hmm. them. But sometimes you, you get to be efficient, otherwise you cannot serve them. And that means it goes back to the back end. Sometimes it's technology that demands that. The technology that revolutions the back end. You need to use it. But I think we need to look to this as this is a marathon. This is something that you continuously need to do. It will never be over. And that means after a cycle of back-end improvement, you need to think about the front-end. You cannot lose sight is, are you continuously adding more value to your customer? Because otherwise, there will be no way to justify all the new technologies, all the new transformations to, to stay relevant. So you really need to find the help, not lose sight of the customer, and see this as an ever-growing marathon. So transformation will never be over. That's my view. It's about resilience. Yes. Yeah. Find your energy. As always. <laughs> As always, okay. As we have here, oh, oh, it's right in there. Time's up. Sorry, guys. Um, I thank you very much for, <laughs> um, for our talk. I hope that it was as enjoyable for you as it was for me. And thank you again for your participation. I'm looking forward to enhance our discussion privately later on today. So have a nice day for, forward from now on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.